guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a reading vlog that I wasn't gonna do. I decided to do a reading vlog of The War of Two Queens. I've seen so many people so angry about this book that I'm like, okay, but I have to record my reactions because I am 150 pages in. I got this early, but then I got Penelope Douglas's arc, so I was planning on starting this Saturday. Red Falls Boys instead all weekend. Started this, and then I, it's Wednesday today, so it came out yesterday. I'm aware people read this book in one day. Came out on a Tuesday, and people are already done with it. I've had this for a week, and I'm only on page 150, but I'm a slower reader when it comes to reading physically, so I don't know how much I'll get through like tonight or my goal is to finish it by Saturday. It's Wednesday today. And so this one is book four in the series. I'm going to try to keep it as spoiler free right now and then at the end I'll go into spoilers because I know I want people to be able to watch it who might have not read it and who have read it. So I will definitely put spoilers on the screen if I talk about them, but this is Poppy and Cass and it's book four. I did not read Shadow and the Ember. I was 100 pages in and I was so bored I didn't finish and I never picked it back up. I don't think you have to read that to read this. I was doing my reading sprints with Tori and Sam. Tori from Novel Life and Sam from Sam Reads Little. We were doing reading sprints yesterday for this book. They both have already finished, unless Sam might not be finished yet, but Tori finished. She has a 40 minute reading vlog that she's putting up that she has to edit. And so I decided, cause like Tori spoiled a little thing for me. I asked her to. And now I'm like, I have to read this book and have my reaction because I want something to happen that I guess people don't, which I'm not going to talk about right now, but I, I like messy romances, okay? It's the kind of reader I am, the messier the better. And my problem with series that follow the same couple is that once they're established, I get bored. And I get bored when they're just like, they're torn apart because of circumstances. Not like their love is torn apart, but like physically they're apart. I like it when the romance gets messy. I like it when feelings get a little complicated and other people enter the picture. So I was a little bored for the first three books of the series. They like each other and they like each other. And that's like all the, the series has been so far. That's all I'll say. And so they are, I can say in the beginning of this book, they are physically not together. I'm assuming you've hopefully have read the other three if you're here for this vlog. So Poppy and Cass are not together. Crazy things have happened in the first three books. And this one, just like the other ones, is slow and fast. So I'm 150 pages in and I want to say like two things have happened, realistically. So there's been a lot of like nothing. And then like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And then a lot of nothing. So yeah. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm not a fan of the not action-packed parts, but I know the ending is something that everybody on TikTok is mad about. And Tori, I think, loved it, so I think I'm gonna like it too. We gotta have the angst in there somewhere, so I'm excited to read this. And Poppy has um, some things to discover about herself. There's a lot of, like, info dumping. We have a character in here whose job is to info dump, and it's because he'll just, like, remember something and info dump. I don't mind that. I'm like, okay, whatever. We're gonna get that information information somehow anyways. I'm not like super picky when it comes to fantasy romance because I'm not like a super super fantasy reader. I'm a romance reader so I don't care when like the fantasy isn't as good like fantasy readers do but we're gonna read this and see how it goes. I'm 150 pages in so up to you guys as I read and we'll see if I love it or not because I'm already like sneaking ahead to those chapters Tori told me about that I'm very excited about but I don't want to spoil myself even though I made her spoil it for me because now I'm like <laughs> really excited so that's all I'm gonna say but I'm gonna go and read more and up to you guys when I have something to say but check out Tori and Sam are both doing a vlog so I will link theirs down below check them out and we'll see how I feel hey guys I am getting ready for my interview with Joanna Shoup it is 6 43 right now and my interview is at 7 so I'm setting everything up figured I would update you guys while I have my lamp in here, I'm wearing my design shirt from the Historical Romance Readathon where it's Dukes, Rogues, Rakes, Pirates, Vikings, Highlanders. I love this shirt. That's what I'm wearing it for the interview, but I haven't gotten to read it too much more. So it's Friday, actually. I think the last time I updated you was Wednesday. I didn't get to read as much as I wanted to yesterday, but I'm on page 270 now, which still I have so much more to read. And I feel like the plot's super slow still. I want more of Castile's perspective and also like a little bit more like give us more to hold on to. Like 
there are parts where they can see each other and I want like way more of that and just a feel of okay we're going somewhere with this plot instead of oh now they're fighting these people and now she's talking to this person there's a lot of talking in this book and like dropping of information so info dumping and it just makes the plot go by really slow and that's why I really struggle reading these books fast because the plot's so slow that I can't read them fast and I feel like in book one the last like 200 pages were crazy and I remember vividly remember reading it so quickly because everything was happening so fast I just feel like nothing's happening and I feel like the ending's gonna be fast of this one again but like at this point I'm just like not a lot's going on and there's just not a lot for me to like grasp onto that would make me want to read faster so it's a slow going process I don't care like who these people are how many people they're fighting like I just don't care and it's also hard because I haven't read the last book in so long that it, it, a lot of these people I'm like wait who was that again it's like slowly coming back to me but I also am not feeling like super invested in this story because I don't remember a lot so it could be a me problem but I am enjoying seeing them like see each other again because I don't want a book where they're not together for the entirety of the book so at least we have that because I'm almost 300 pages in and they're still not physically together which is annoying so I'm glad that we have that little aspect but and I feel like there's not too much development with Kieran's and her relationship yet. I had to go set up for my interview, so I'll talk to you guys tomorrow and hopefully I've read a lot more. Hi guys, it is Saturday night. I just had a live show for my Bridgerton season two react guess chat live show with some of my friends and it was a lot of fun. I have had a busy day, so I haven't had too much time to read. I've read like 140 pages today and I'm on page 400. So I still have 240 pages to go. I, my goal was to finish today, but that does not look like it's gonna happen. We'll see if it does, but I really wanna stay up and read. It's 9.20 right now. I was gonna wash off my face, brush my teeth, and sit up in bed and try to read, hopefully at least 200 pages. I don't think that'll happen. I know where what I want to happen happens. I don't want to spoil anything, but I have a bit to go. So that's gonna motivate me to read more. The plot has definitely picked up. Reaver has become one of my favorite characters. I really love him. Some things don't make quite as much sense that are happening, like some decisions. I'm like, well, why didn't this happen here? And why is this conveniently happening here? So there's some plot points that I'm just like questioning a little bit, but the plot's definitely picking up because things are actually happening. We actually got to see an interaction between Poppy and Cass, which like made me realize like I'm here for the romance. I'm a romance reader. I need more payoff in the romance than I'm getting in this book. Like we've only had one scene of them like actually together and it was very brief. So we're 400 pages in. But I understand it's, it's fantasy romance. So we are gonna get a lot of fantasy, but I still want it to be balanced with the romance. But they are an established couple and we're four books in. So I get why that's happening. Like kind of like with Outlander, how they will go so long apart. And it's very frustrating because I want them just to be together and I want that payoff. But I'm enjoying it. Like I said, the plot's definitely picking up there are some parts where I'm like why is this happening this happening but I am enjoying the new characters I feel like we're not getting as much Kieran though I feel like he's just a very very side character not like really in there even though he's with Poppy for her all of her chapters I just feel like he's kind of falling flat in this book to me which is sad because he's one of my favorite characters but he like banters and bickers a little but he's taken a huge backseat to the plot and I just feel like the characters aren't as well-rounded in this book except for like Reaver's personality is like finally showing now but I kind of wanted more from them but we'll see how things progress I feel like a lot's been overshadowed by the plot that's been dragged out so far so I don't know I need a good plot but I need good characters so I'm like both character and plot driven but we'll see I'll keep on reading and hopefully I'll update you when I'm done. If I finish reading, I probably haven't. I can I can try though. Hey guys, it is currently Sunday morning. I did spend two hours this morning finishing the last 150 pages of this book. I stayed up until 11 last night and read a page 500, which was pretty impressive for me because I was struggling to stay awake and I wake up at 6.45 every day. So I wanted to make sure I still got a decent amount of sleep since that's when I sleep the most are the weekends because I have to get up at 5 30 on the weekdays so i did finish this and i've gotten to talk about my feelings a little bit with tori and sam and started watching tori's reading vlog so before i get into spoilers i will say i end up giving this book 
four stars. I liked the plot a lot better than books two and three. I feel like we were actually moving somewhere with the plot and things were being exposed, relationships were evolving, and characters were introduced, and I feel like a lot stronger bonds with other characters were created in this book, so I enjoyed that. I feel like the plot was a little bit slow in places like especially the first half of the book was really slow but I feel like that's definitely very normal for Jennifer Armitra. I'm gonna put this book down now since you guys know what I'm talking about but I feel like her plots are very info dumpy with having a character dump information so it's always like a big joke that Poppy asks so many questions but there's always people to answer them and so we have Reaver who's there who explains a ton of stuff and then at the end we have a different character show up who explains a ton of stuff so I feel like that's just her way of world building is info dump with characters. So I enjoy the plot though, like I said, because I feel like the plot moved somewhere because book two was all of them traveling to get to this place and then book three was like super exciting because the end of book two you're like holy crap what's gonna happen and then not a lot really happened in that book in my opinion and so in this one I feel like a lot more happened and a lot more was set up for the rest of the series that wasn't already set up which I appreciated so I'm giving it four stars but I do want to address getting into spoilers I want to address the joining the way I saw the complaints going people were extremely angry they claimed that pop was emotionally cheating on Cass that her and Kieran like they made it sound like they were having an affair and that there was this like huge poly relationship happening and to me first of all I don't call that emotional cheating like when Poppy and Kieran were growing closer when Cass was kidnapped and even Poppy had to feed off of Kieran there was nothing like sexually enticing about feeding off of Kieran to her she I mean like nothing happened between them she fed because she had to and she even talked about it with Cass and talked about how she didn't want to and she was trying to hold out to feed off of Cass because it was such an intimate experience between them but she had to do it with Kieran and it was just feeding it was nothing else and they did have moments where Kieran like pretty much slept by her side every night and she would like wear Kieran's clothes but her and Kieran were the only people who could really understand the fact that Cass was kidnapped and like their emotional turmoil over the fact that Cass was kidnapped because Kieran isn't Kieran bonded to him like he's his like I forget what it's called but like Kieran has a special bond with Cass Poppy is literally mates with him and so it is the closest person in their lives is gone so of course they're gonna seek comfort in one another I did not feel anything romantically happening between Kieran and Poppy even when we had the joining like she made it clear I thought it was a very interesting choice so she made it clear she didn't know who was who when and so that's why I want to say she never focused on one specific character over another and that meant she never focused on the intimacy with her and Kieran. She didn't know who it was during the whole process. She like knew they were both there and she didn't even know if it happened with both of them or one of them. She just didn't know. And so we aren't focusing on this physical relationship between her and Kieran. Even like later when they are sleeping and Kieran comes in and is like on one side of Poppy and Cass is on the other. It's just a sense of comfort and what it reminded me of I was talking to Tori about this it reminded me a lot of wolf song where ox would be like surrounded by all the werewolves and they all just wanted to be touching him and like holding him and comforting him and it was just a sense of their bond together and so that's really what I got out of Kieran and Cass and like all of these complaints made it sound like it was for sure definite a poly relationship and if it is I'm fine with that like I don't have anything against that but Jennifer Armentrout really left it open where it's not clear cut of what it is. Is it something more or not? To me, it wasn't clearly defined as something that's going to be a thruple. Like, that was not c communicated to me. We knew the joining has been coming since book one. I'm pretty sure they mentioned it in book one. I was looking on Goodreads. There's an, a review that literally lists out every moment the key joining is mentioned in every single book. So it is no surprise that it has come up in this book. I was excited to have the joining. I mean, it was going to be an interesting thing to throw into this relationship to make it evolve because like I said, this is the same couple for four books now. So something has to evolve and change or else it's going to be boring and stagnant and I don't want a boring and stagnant relationship. So I liked the fact that something else was thrown in there to develop and change their relationship and I thought it was fine. So I actually thought it would be like 
m more than what it was. I don't know how to know how else to put that. I was telling Tori, I was like, I was kind of like underwhelmed by the joining. So I feel like a lot of people exaggerated what happened and they have their right to be upset with the storyline. Like that's completely fine, but don't attack an author, especially don't even message him that you hated their book. Like that's mean. But I really enjoyed the final battle scene. I feel like things got really heightened. I enjoyed Poppy's uh, struggle with like losing control of her humanity. I thought that was a really cool plot point. I do think that the ending was a little confusing with how much that was being dumped on us with the one character that came in because we have Malik and Malik then we have Nectus and Nectus I don't even remember there were two end names as well that were very confusing to me and he came in and just info dumped everything and I was very confused Miss Darcy's gonna come say hi so I'm still like super confused about all the characters in this world I feel I don't know like how I could not be confused I didn't reread book three I didn't read a shadow in the ember so I maybe that's why but I just I'm very confused about who is who and what's what, but I'm interested to see where the plot will go because like there is a whole new plot point happening that is opened up for book four. Also, I was a little disappointed in the fact that we did not get more from her father plot line because they saw her father in that cage in the previous book. He was mentioned and she went through this whole dilemma of like, well, if I see them both, like who am I gonna save? That didn't happen. Like we didn't even see her dad. Ever. And I don't know like where he is. They mentioned where he was, but like no one saw him. So I'm annoyed like that plot point was completely skipped over, but it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully that plays out in the next book because it'd be annoying if it didn't. I do uh, appreciate Poppy and Cass's relationship though. Like once, like I said, once they were united, I really enjoyed seeing them back together and just how obsessed they are with each other and they're all consuming love for one another. I really enjoyed that, but they were not together for half the book. I liked the dream walking aspect where they got to see each other throughout that time apart. I feel like that held over our need for this romance so I I was pleasantly surprised with this book I think that the criticism is a little much um, that this book got because of the choice that Jennifer Armentrout made like if you genuinely didn't like the plot that's totally fine but like the fact that people made a big stink about the ending and the relationship with Kieran and Cass and Poppy and having read it myself now I'm like I feel like it was a little exaggerated how people felt but if you didn't like that choice that's completely fine I just thought it was gonna be a lot more than what it was so I still enjoyed this book I don't know if I'll continue on in the series but I ended up giving it four stars I think it's one of my favorites after the first book because books two and three I feel like really slowed down plot wise so I appreciated how this added a lot more and delved into a lot more into the world and to the plot of where it's going to go next so that's all I have let me know if you enjoyed this book and what your thoughts were I would absolutely love to hear and I'm off to go watch Tori and Sam's reading vlogs through because I know they both did reading vlogs that I haven't been able to to watch yet. I will link them down below if you're interested, but that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.